And while we've cleared up the difference between a dust storm versus a haboob that technically happened yesterday, the real concern comes during and after the storm blows through. So how dangerous is the dust to your health? Joining me now is Dr. Natasha Bouillon, National Medical Director of One Medical. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. Dr. When, whenever we have a dust storm, there's always that fear and yeah. concern about mm -hmm. valley fever. So how concerned should we be after what happened yesterday? Well, it is a legitimate fear because we know that the dust storm can kick up coccyx spores from the dirt into the air. Mm -hmm. If we inhale those spores and they settle into our lungs, we could get valley fever, which is a fungal infection. And, you know, it takes about five to even 21 days for symptoms to appear. People sometimes get coughs, headaches, shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. But some people who get valley fever won't get any symptoms at all. Well, and I was going to say, some people don't even know they have it. Yeah, some people don't know they have it, especially people who are from Arizona that might have had it in the past. All right, so what should we do? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the best advice is to stay indoors during a dust storm. And of course, close your windows, close your doors the best you can. Now, for people who have to work outdoors or even work outdoors the day after a dust storm, you know, if you're out there as a landscaper, it's a good idea to wear an N95 mask and make sure that you wash off the dust because those spores can linger in the air even a day or two after a dust storm. Yeah, and I was going to say, even walking to the parking garage, mm -hmm. my car was in the parking garage and it was still filled, covered in exactly. dust. Exactly, yeah, there's it's spores everywhere. There's spores and dust everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. no kidding. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who should be most uh, concerned? Well, typically it's the people who usually have an immunocompromised immune system. So it's folks who are older adults, people with chronic conditions, although there is one unique group. So people who are out-of-state visitors to Arizona, yeah. they should particularly be concerned because because they often don't have any exposure to valley fever in the past, oh. and those folks could get exposed for the first time, and they're more likely to get an infection because they don't have any immunity. Oh, okay, so they're kind of more at risk exactly. than those of us who have lived here for a while and maybe are used to it. Yeah, we're less at risk because we've built up immunity, we might have had a prior infection, and so we just have to warn out-of-state visitors to be vigilant about being outdoors during a dust storm. Just stay indoors, that's the safest option. Yeah, okay, so not all dust storms or haboobs mm -hmm. bring in that rain that we saw yesterday. Yeah. Did that really help when, you know, it comes to all this dust and possible valley fever? Certainly, yeah. If there's a heavy rainstorm, that does help get the spores back into the ground. If it's a light rainstorm, it doesn't always help. But here's the catch. The rain does actually end up in the soil, and it can produce more spores in the soil. And so it creates a vicious cycle because during the next dust storm, there might be even more spores from a prior monsoon storm. Wow, that is wild. All right, Dr. Natasha, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate it. Coming